What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Mini Figure Creation channel. I'm your host, Chase. And today, we are going to be breaking down all seven of the summer 2023 sets that I have not talked about yet. I did miss the mechs because I was sick, but I'm back today, and I'm going to be talking about all of the brand new release sets. Starting in price order, I'm going to do the mechs last. I'm going to start with the most expensive set, the Yavin 4 Rebel Base. This set is okay. It looks very similar to the style of Darth Vader's castle, and I think that's really cool. You have that parallel, that good versus evil. The Y-Wing looks great. The tree looks like it came out of a very, very poor mock. It just looks like it was made by a child. And overall, it feels like there's not enough of Yavin 4. I feel like the scaling is not that quite... We, when we see into the pictures later, it just looks really cramped, and there's not enough space. Like, that's all the space. Like, I, we need more room for the characters to maneuver. Now that I'm looking at it from this angle, I do see, oh, well, we have this a little bit and this a little bit. Well, I just feel like we're missing something, especially with that $170 price for only 1,000 pieces. It is a crazy thing to put my mind around. Now going on to probably the best part of this set, which is the massive amount of minifigures. I do believe that there are at least 13, wait. Yes, there are 13 minifigures and two astromech droids. So let's start off with the exclusives. We of course have a brand new Luke and Han for them celebration with the medallion on their chest. It's printed, I do believe, I don't think it's molded, and it's for that gold medal that we got in a minifigure series. A new, brand new Leia that we've never gotten before, along with the General Dodonna, which was in the X-Wing, and two pilots for, I believe the uh, one is for X-Wing and one is for the Y-Wing, which is really cool. We've never gotten them with brand new helmet prints. Chewbacca, we've gotten him before. Um, along with C-3PO and R2-D2, who, of course, we've gotten many times before. I do believe that R2-D2 has back printing. I don't know if we can see it in one of the shots, but there you go. You can see all these minifigures in display here, and we have, uh, of course, another one of the Rebel Guards and a Rebel uh, sort of construction officer, I do believe. That helmet is really annoying me because it's just the same, but it has no thing there. It's it's a bit confusing, but I do see they tried to add more figures to bulk up this set and make it look a little more like it's worth the price. I do think it's very overpriced, and I will unfortunately be not picking this one up. The next most expensive set is surprisingly the Advent Calendar. This $45 set, same as last year, $45. It does have, price is probably a top five Advent Calendar. Starting off up there, we have the Armored Assault Tank, which was the first set to come with Ahsoka from Season 7. We have an ATST. We have a Clone Turbo Tank, I do believe that is, along with this, uh, I don't know what it was called. Uh, it was on Geonosis, though. This is a mini station for the Clone Command Station. And the 3 and the 212 Trooper is properly advertised with that wrong head printing. We do get a staff, which is really, really cool, and a battle droid. Like, if the battle droid goes with the staff, it's great to add to your battle droid army. Another one, probably my favorite micro build, is one of those mini Star Destroyers, which is the same, I do believe, same build as the Executor Star Destroyer, the mini Star Destroyers that came with luck with that. We have one of these gliders for the Ewok, a mini Ewok village, which is probably in my top two favorite sets of all time, a mini version of the Justifier, a mini version of the Mandalorian's N1 Starfighter. Again, we have the Imperial Shuttle there. We do have, I think this is a pit droid that is Christmas themed, along with two builds from Endor. Another one of my favorites, which is the Emperor's Throne, along with a, uh, what is that? A reindeer gonk droid and a mini speeder, which is probably the weakest build just because I'm pretty sure this is a mint from The Mandalorian. Now, going on to the figures, I of course talked about the 212 Trooper, a brand new Ewok with new printing, 
Emperor Palpatine, which I'm a little annoyed. He didn't get um, a normal print, another cheap way to get Emperor Palpatine because he is in a lot of expensive sets. Along with Princess Leia from Endor, which I do believe is the same figure um, from the diorama. And probably the only reason why I'll be buying this advent calendar for the first time ever is that Omega figure. I did not pick up the Justifier that because the fi that figure was the only reason to pick it up. Omega is the one figure, Star Wars figure, that I very much need right now. And I'm happy to pick it up in an advent calendar during the holidays. Now going up to the next most expensive set, we have Yoda's Jedi Starfighter. Now, this is probably the most disappointing set. I know we, like, there was a lot of speculation that, like, the um, 332nd Battle Pack was going to be, like, that was just disappointing in different ways. This was, this pretty much looks exactly like the old one. No new minifigures. I don't think that R2D, I'm going to look. Here we can get a better shot. If the R2D2 does have act printing the moment of truth, it does. That is great. That is a point for this set, although the build is very similar. And that, I believe that only came out, like, I want to say six years ago. So it's not the right time to make this set. Yoda, of course, there's nothing new about him. The Starfighter itself, I mean, it's a Jedi Starfighter. I wish we got would have gotten a third minifigure. I don't know what from this arc you could have done. Maybe you use the um one of the Kam Kaminoans but make it one of those masked figures that's with the black in the black robes with the white mask from that arc I'm not too familiar with it because uh that is one of the um arcs I have not rewatched yet overall it is a 20th anniversary Clone Wars so I do understand why they might have made it but I don't think this is the right set there's especially so soon after its release and because it, there's literally barely anything is different than it um I don't think this will set sell as well. I do think for newer LEGO fans who don't have this set, I do actually have this set in my collection. That will be sell decently well just because it's a cheap way to get Yoda and that printed R2-D2. But that's the only reason why I think that set will do well. Now moving on to the 332nd Ahsoka's Clone Trooper Battle Pack. This set is bad. I don't know what to say. The build is not good. It's very disappointing. And the minifigures are very disappointing. Now, I am known as a hater, but I do genu genuinely like a lot of these other sets. This one is not good. This They perfectly made the helmet for the 332nd Trooper three years ago. And why they chose not to reuse it is blasphemy. I don't, we didn't need that Commander Vaughn. We don't need him. Because, first of all, this is a battle pack. It literally says it battle pack you're not supposed to be at named characters in battle packs we ju we didn't need the helmet holes in the set i don't understand why lego keeps deciding to do this we could have like literally it's just very frustrating to me especially because they manage to even with the helmet holes mess it up even more the other parts of the thing also commander vaughn's supposed to have different like colors on his armor not too familiar, even though that arc is one of my favorites. The box art is incredible. Of course, you get Mandalore in the background. Really great touch. But overall, the build... This, this was originally leaked as a Swamp Speeder set. This is a battle pack. The Swamp Speeder looks okay. I mean, it's nothing too special. There's no Swamp Speeders on Mandalore. But it doesn't. in the end, it doesn't matter. The color scheme's okay. In the end, I'm just... A little disappointed no i'm a lot disappointed with this set there's like no words to describe it even though that is my job now the mechs i know this set has these sets have been out for a while but i'm just here to talk about them i'm not even gonna go into severe detail the figures are pretty much great i'm interested to see how they do individually i assume that boba fett will be the best seller and I wouldn't be surprised if the Stormtrooper does well, too, because it does have a new printing. Darth Vader, of course, is Darth Vader. I do like that new lightsaber piece, although the lightsaber hilt is really... It's not very great. But overall, they're good. I mean, they're taking up the spots of what could possibly be, like, anything else. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. But there's many things that would have done better than these. Oh my god, that blaster just looks super big and bulky but overall these sets are just disappointing and i do really really love the advent calendar that's probably the best set out of these seven 
I mean, the, the like the battle pack is okay. It's a battle pack. I'm happy that we're getting them again. And it's not super expensive. It's $20. I'm ha- ha- glad about that. I know a lot of people like the Yavin 4 Rebel base. I'm not the biggest fan. But those are my overall thoughts on these seven sets. I'm very excited for September 1st when we get the g- gunship along with the Ghost and the other Ahsoka sets. I've been saving up for that day. I am so excited. Let me know what you guys think about these sets in the comments section below. And make sure to have a great day and subscribe.